Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back if you're new here. My name is Silke and I am going to show you um, a sewing tutorial for the Million Button Dress. For clarification, uh, the pattern of the Million Button Dress is not my own pattern. I will link the pattern down below, it's from Daria Pattern Making. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of a twist today because this is going to be my ceremony dress for my wedding. Um, so if you're interested, just keep on watching and I'll see you guys later. Okay, so here in front of me I have uh, the pattern downloaded and cut to a size... I honestly don't even remember. But there's a size chart on page 3 of the instructions and I just inserted my sizes and I think I chose a size 40 um, because the um, the waist was right and the hip measurement was a little bit too small that doesn't really matter because I am not going to use the skirt pattern I'm going to make my own skirt pattern so um, pattern number five no, that's not pattern number five. That was page five. Um, the skirt pattern, um, skirt or low gathering piece. Um, that's the only pattern I'm not going to use. Um, if we go on, you just assemble, uh, you print the pages at 100% and you assemble them as shown in the instructions. And when you're done, these are the patterns that you are left with. So, it's a sleeve, a cuff, a back bodice, a front bodice, a cup piece, this is a skirt, and then there are bias tapes um, for the neckline. What I'm going to do is I want to slightly um, alter the neckline. I want to have it a little bit uh, smaller at the shoulder seam, less wide at least. Um, I also need to alter a little bit at the waist because this piece is a little bit big. I bought a slightly stretching fabric um, and I want to have like a, a tighter fit at the waistline. Um, so I'm going to alter that and, and I'm going to make my own skirt pattern. I don't think I'm going to alter something at the sleeve, but I might alter the, cu uh, the cuffs a little bit uh, because I want to have them fitted to my wrist. And to have them fitter, fitted, they need to have a, a slight bit of slope. And the pattern for the sleeve cuffs is straight. So um, it if it's tight, it would be tight at the at around uh, halfway uh, the underarm, and it would be wider at the wrist. Um, so to have it fitted, it needs to be a bit sloped and smaller at the wrist, and a, bit, a little bit wider at the underarm. Um, so I might make my own pattern for that, but furthermore, I am going to keep these patterns the way they are. Just need to make my own skirt pattern. Um, if you want a tutorial on how to make your own skirt pattern, I will definitely do that. So just leave a comment below. But for now, we're. I think we're just going to cut the pattern to size. So last time you guys checked in, I was uh, drafting the pattern. I have altered all uh, of the original patterns that I needed and I also made a skirt pattern. So as you can see, it's a fit and flare kind of mermaid style. More of a fit and flare than a mermaid because it's 
actually not even that wide and the back side has a train it's it's not dramatic it's like um, 20 to 30 centimeters longer than the front no that's not true it's longer than that <laughs> but it, it's not uh, dramatically long so um, it's time to uh, put them all in the fabric. I have enough fabric! That that was really uh, bothering me, me that I didn't know if I had enough fabric. But I do! So, um, very happy with that. So now it's time to place them and cut them. Okay, so I just cut all my pieces. Um, next step is to... Um, yeah, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly don't know how to call it in English, but um, I'm going to strengthen the the pieces according to the instructions with some. I honestly don't know. We call it fliesseline in Dutch, but <laughs> I honestly don't know the English word. But oh, interfacing! Thank you. I'm going to interface um, the pieces according to the instruction, and uh, yeah, that's it. So let's do that. Okay, small update. I was trying to, for freaking once, just follow the descriptions. Um, but of course you come along some bumps on the road. Um, one of the things that I had... <laughs> okay, so my little sister got COVID-19. And then my brother got COVID-19, so I was locked up in here and I could not go to the store. One of the things that I needed from the store was um, this. A, a button loop trim. I only have it in a nude color and my dress is ivory, so I don't have a button loop trim. I did come across some small elastic in the uh, atelier. So I think we're going to make our own button loop trim. Um, and also my uh, needle um, needed a new one. My machine needed a new needle. So couldn't buy them. Had to wait till the atelier uh, was open again. So um, yeah, I have needles, I have elastic. So we're going to make some button loop trim. Uh, what I did do yesterday was um, I finished the back uh, neck line 
and I um, finished the darts in the back bodice piece and sewed one side seam in the skirt with a French seam. So we're going to do the other half of the skirt. I didn't go along because my needle was uh, it's called dull. So um, yeah, we're going to put in a new needle and we're going to start sewing again. So I finished the front two bodice pieces. Um, yesterday I already finished the back panel, so um, it's time to make one bodice.
Okay, so little update. I finished the bodice. It's right here. And I also finished the skirt. Um, and with finish, I mean it's together. The darts are in, the side seams are in, with French seams. I didn't finish up the front yet. First off, I noticed when I altered the cuffs that I made them too small. So sadly, I have to take them out and redo them. Also, I don't like the button loop trim that I made by hand. It's not sturdy enough, it's not pretty. So I'm gonna uh, take the cuffs fully out and just throw this away, redo them. And I'm going to take the front of the dress out with the button loop trim. And I'm going to redo that also. Um, I wanted to buy new button loop trim because I, I just really don't like this. I don't think it's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's my ceremony dress, so I want it to look pretty. Um, currently, I don't know why, but I have called every uh, fabric store and well, every craft store. No one has these button loop trims in supply, so I still need to make them myself. Uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this but with a thicker elastic because this is just not working um, so for now let's take it out and start over again So the last clip you saw was me taking the dress apart and the dress is now almost completely back to square one. Um, we're a few days uh, further and um, I wasn't able to leave the house because um, everybody in this house has COVID-19. So uh, last thing I did was I made new cuffs and I made them a little bit rounded. Um, so they fit better to my arm because obviously this part is wider than the wrist so I made them rounded to fit my arm perfectly so it's tight to my wrist but also flattering uh, furthermore I just went to the fabric store finally uh, because I was able to leave quarantine and I got myself some thicker elastic I got myself some satin trim of 10 millimeters white and some new um, Thread, thank you So we are going to make our own button loop trim and this is the first time that I ever attempted to make my own button loop trim so it's gonna be a learning curve and I'm excited so let's go ahead so what I have is I have paper a pen a ruler my elastic and my satin trim and some pins 
the paper I'm using is pattern paper because it's a little bit thinner than regular paper, thus easier pinnable. Um, what I'm going to do is first start off with the line I'm going to sew. I'm just going to grab my measuring tape because my ruler doesn't have centimeters on it. Um, yes, for example, I bought this button loop trim at the fabric store and these button loops are fairly close to each other. We are going to use this button loop trim along the whole front of the dress and I was not planning on using actually a million buttons. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to space the button loops a little bit further more out. So for example, I want my first loop to start here. I want it to be half a centimeter wide and then I want two and a half centimeters intersection. Two and a half centimeters equals about an inch, so about an inch apart. Then I'm going to do another half centimeter for the loop and another two and a half centimeters in between. Um, what I'm gonna do next is insert a pin on the other end of the line and then in the middle of the two marks we did here. And if things want to go well, I should be able to loop it around here and then back there. So that looks good. Okay, so all the pins are in and let's see if this actually works. Okay, so my next, the next step in my fairly accurate plan <laughs> is to put the satin trim around the edge. So, like there. That looks good. And now I'm going to sew with the smallest stitch that my machine goes at, which is one millimeter. And I'm going to sew around the satin trim. And that's exactly at the point where I made the first line. I'm just going to sew right over that. And I hope it works. Okay, so it worked. I'm really glad it did. Um, the loops are pretty small, but also pretty elastic. So I want to uh, put a pearl button on the other side and this is far big enough 
for a pearl button to go through. Yeah. I d wouldn't, th wouldn't have thought it would work, but I'm glad it did. So now I just got to make about a million more, so. But first, before I'm going to do that, because that is going to drive me nuts. I know, that is definitely going to drive me nuts. So before I'm going to do that, I'm going to finish the bodice part of the dress, which equals putting the cup back in this, and then putting this panel back into the bodice. And after that, I'm going to make the button loop trim for the sleeves. I'm going to finish up the sleeves. And when that's done, we're going to look at the button loop trim for the skirt. So let's first just finish the bodice part and we'll look at some more button loops after that. Hello everyone and welcome back to the atelier. It is, I am so happy you guys, it is officially the first sunny day of the year. And for February, it's quite impressive that I brought my sunglasses. So, back at the atelier, that means I'm corona free. I was free to leave the house for the past two weeks or so. And uh, I had school in the past two weeks and right now it is vacation. Um, so I have another week <laughs> to finish this dress and um, my official wedding dress, which you can see in the other videos on my channel right here. So check those out. Uh, that's a much more complicated process than this is. Um, but I'm excited because today we are going to finish the dress. I'm happy, I'm on schedule, <laughs> I'm excited. So um, last night at home I um, sewed on all the buttons and I have a short clip um, right here. And um, what we're going to do today is we're going to give it a good steam and going to make sure it's crease free and crisp and beautiful and then we're going to show the finished product I guess so yeah really excited let's go <laughs> Okay, so there's one last thing about the dress that was bothering me a little bit. And um, that's the fact that I did not um, secure the interfacing of the button loop trim that I made myself. Oh, by the way, um, I used bias tape the second time and I know you're not supposed to do it with 
um, 45 degree cut uh, fabric because it doesn't hold secure that well but I just love the finish of this and yeah anyway so um, the bottom the bottom does um, eventually the the loops stop because you know I'm not gonna button the dress all the way to the floor and um, it just flaps open and on this side where the buttons are I secured it with the a five millimeter stitch um, because this is going to overlap that anyway so you're not going to see that but on this side if I were to to stitch it secure then you'd see that so um, what I figured out was I could use a double-sided adhesive so I'm just going to use a test patch and see if you can see through double-sided uh, interfacing so um, yeah let's try that Oh yeah, one quick word before I'm going to show you the dress. It's laying there to cool, so it's done. Um, what I wanted to tell you is the skirt. Oh, let's first just do the disclaimer one more time. I didn't make this pattern. The pattern is linked down below. If you want a full tutorial on how to draft this, uh, no, not draft, how to sew, this dress with the pattern in the description box there's also a full-length tutorial from the person who made this pattern um, I bought it on Etsy so there disclaimer I don't want any problems with anyone I just love sewing love uh, sharing what I made so that's it good friends um, the skirt so um, I made a mermaid or trumpet style skirt. Officially, when you draft the skirt, I'm going to step aside so I have this place to show pictures. Officially, when you draft a mermaid or trumpet style skirt, you need to use a basic um, pa a skirt pattern. And skirts have darts in the front and the back. To make a, to use the official way, to make a, a trumpet or mermaid style um, skirt you need to cut the pattern along the dart so darts on top and then you cut it straight down and you let it flow outward from the darts to the side and from the darts to the front and side back you know what I mean I'm going to put a picture here so it's a little bit more clear what I'm trying to say because some things, especially about sewing and drafting, they sound just very logical in my head, but some people would look at me and just wonder if I speak Chinese. Um, so, picture. Um, I did not have enough fabric to do that. So what I did is I just kept the darts in the, in the front and the back panel and I just let it flow outward from there. So, what happens if you do that? Um, first of all, you're not really going to get a outward flowing skirt because gravity, uh, even if the skirt is sl uh, slightly going outward on a side, it's just going to drop down. Um, in my case, I did not have more fabric than this, so the little bit of flow that it did give was enough for me. This fabric was almost, we use euros here, but I want to say almost like $60 per meter. And I know you use yards, which is just so weird. It's a metric system, 10 times 10 times 10, that makes so much more sense. So um, about $60 a meter, 50 euros a meter, and I bought three meters. If you want to make a um, trumpet or mermaid style skirt get more get loads just if you need to get a little bit of a cheaper fabric so you could use the length because you're gonna need it um, the solution that I did do 
it's not 100 effective but it was good enough for me um, because I was not able to buy more fabric and I just I love this fabric it has the slightest stretch to it which is just so comfortable um, so yeah I wanted to get this fabric I bought three meters and that was not enough so that's that um, yeah, a little bit of information and now let's just show the dress. So, funny story, last weekend I had a nightmare that the wedding was tomorrow. I'm sort of betting that everyone who is married or is planning to get married knows this nightmare. And I am so happy to just be one step closer to being ready for the wedding. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, this is my first English video with Dutch translation, so I'm a Dutch native speaker, I am Dutch. Um, probably all Americans know that Dutch people, they all speak English, so from now on I am going to uh, do all my videos in English with Dutch subtitles, um, because I want to reach a broader uh, public. So, <laughs> yeah. That's it for today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, if you like these kinds of videos, please consider subscribing. Uh, check out my other video for uh, my wedding dress. Um, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>